Welcome to Ridge Life. Today on Lessons of the Ridge, we're going to talk about God's promises. And to do that, we're going to go up the loft of the barn. All right. Come on up with me. All right, we're up in the loft of the barn. As you can see, we've got wood to repair the barn. You know, we've had a lot of termite damage. So we're going to make a bunch of needed repairs very, very soon. Let's uh, turn around here. Let's see, we have beekeeping materials. Let's open up and take a look outside, though. Let's take a little walk around this loft here and see what we've got going on. As I mentioned, we have we have some beekeeping supplies we keep over here, and you know we're only in our second year of beekeeping, so this I'm sure will will grow and grow. And we have some just some miscellaneous storage. We talked about all our wood. We've got deer hunting materials, a sled for whenever we uh, do get snow, which isn't very often. Okay, one thing uh, I do want to show y'all, come back over here, this is pretty cool, so, you can see the, the pond, of course it's, I'm looking through a dirty window here, but check this out, check these spider eggs or whatever they are, I don't know, but look at that, see how they're attached there, I don't really know. I've never seen anything like that in a spider web before, that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, and we have a large doors down here on this end. We're bringing our hay into the loft, which obviously see we don't we don't have any yet. But these are very very large doors. Nice. Bring the tractor up, the bucket of the tractor. Bring the bales in. Of course, the this door on that the window access on this end gives us other options, but. We're come down here. We're going to talk today from Deuteronomy. Okay, before we get started, I'm going to let you look out this view um, from our loft window. It is quite beautiful. You see our pond over there, and then access to the back 30, and you can see our apiary right there. The bees. Hopefully, you can see them. There they are. We got our Kubota right there. Our chickens are around the corner. You can hear them. Hear them talking to us. But Grandma Carol's uh, log home is just going to be a, that direction from the from the property here. But it turned out to be a beautiful day. It was raining hard this morning. But we'll uh, we'll get into our lessons from the ridge here. Now it shall be, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the offspring of your body, and the produce of your ground, and the offspring of your beasts, the increase of your herd, and the young of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be, blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They will come out against you one way, and will flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessings upon you in your barns, and all that you put your hand to, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as the holy people to himself, as he swore to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in His ways. These blessings that we are promised here in Deuteronomy, the, the very first um, verse, it tells us what, it is, what is needed to achieve these blessings. So now it shall be if you diligently obey the Lord your God. So, obeying the Lord is a 
prerequisite. Yes, we, we get saved when we ask Jesus into our heart and um, uh, kneel down before Him and, and, and understand that we're sinners and we need, a, we need Him to be, for, to be forgiven of our sins. That he, he died for us, for our sins, and that's, that's our way to salvation. But once you're saved, there's this process. Uh, there's sanctification, justification, which you know, we, we've talked about in the past. Whereas we need to get closer and closer to Him. And the only way we can get closer and closer to Him is be more like Him. Uh, Jesus was a sinless man. He is the only person that walked with human needs and human desires and, and human flesh that was strong enough to push aside Satan and his temptations. So for us, we were giving um, a template, the Bible, on what His commandments are are for us to be like Him. So we must diligently obey Him. Now, we're all going to fail at that. And he, he, he knew that from the beginning. That's, again, why, why Jesus died for our sins. But we should strive for that. That's something that we, we've been given that, in that template, that step-by-step -step procedure on how to get closer to Him. Never being perfect like He was, but each day hopefully getting a little bit better in our walk with Christ. He says, all these blessings will come upon us and overtake us if we obey the Lord. He says, we'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. So, we love the country life. This, this piece of heaven we've been given out here, we love this. But there are people who live in the city that are equally as blessed. God has placed them where they are to do the work He has for them there, and He's placed us where we are to do the work for Him here. It also says that blessed shall be the offspring of your body and the produce of your ground and the offspring of your beasts. Increase your herd and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. And that's, and that's a wonderful thing for the, the type of people we are, you know, if, we're, if you're homesteaders or small farmers or um, that the blessing of God to know that if we do His, um, if we follow His commandments and, and try to be uh, as good as we can, knowing that there's nothing good in us. But following the ways He has for us helps us when we go out and do tasks like raising bees in our apiary here. If we come into that with a clean, pure heart, and like I'd said last week, you know, um, it's sitting between the, or sitting on the narrow path between two dangers, uh, if we, we follow that and continue that, He blesses those things. So, when we make it through our first winter with our hive and have a wonderful bounty of a uh, honey harvest last year, um, that was a blessing. And whether I, we, you know, we didn't deserve it because we made so many mistakes, but God blessed our endeavor. Now, whether they make it through the winter this year, I don't know. Um, I haven't been as diligent in obeying the Lord in the things you know I've been taught about my bees, and uh, so I'm praying that you know uh, that I I am blessed with another fruitful harvest. One of our hives may not make it this year, but. Uh, Right now, both of them are doing well, despite of me. Um, but again, I thank the Lord uh, greatly for, for how much He's blessed us in that. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They will come out, they will come out against you one way and will flee before you seven ways. And that is encouraging. That, you know, we, we all have enemies, you know, whether it be uh, Satan himself, the great deceiver, or just the, um, the sins of life, money, uh, power, prestige, all those things that uh, humans strive for, that if we again obey God and follow His ways, those enemies will flee from us. Not only will they come at us, which they will, they will flee from us seven ways. And that's how powerful our God is, that with, with Him on our side, right, Him, you know, He stands behind us, overlooking us, watching our ways, and whenever evil comes upon us and He sees us kneel and pray to Him, it's just like, evil flees. But whenever we look at evil and embrace it, he kind of puts his head down. He's still with us. He walks with us, just like parents walk with their children. And then we put our heads down and go, oh, I wish they made better decisions. But we're there to protect them. We're going to, we're going to get them through. Uh, and hopefully they learn from their mistakes. The Lord will command the blessings upon you in your barns and in all that you put your hand to. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord God gives you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, 
He, as he swore to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And that right there, you know, I'm sitting in this barn in the loft, and that's kind of why I picked this today. Um, that he's blessing us in this barn. This barn, you know, I've showed you our loft, it's not full of hay. It's not full of stores. And I really don't have need for them just yet. You know, so God hasn't provided me all this bounty to fill my, my storehouse with because there's not a need for it. I could put away stores selfishly, and they would rot. They wouldn't be any good by the time I have a flock that would uh, of sheep that would eat, eat the eat the uh, hay, or, uh, or the donkey, the guard donkey that can protect the sheep. I don't have one yet. Why why hoard up these things for thing for for needs I don't have today? So we think about the future, and God tells us to you know be prepared for what's coming, but not to to squander the things He's giving us. You know we 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 put our resources where where we need them today, thinking about the future. Now, we've got stores for our chickens, our, our grains and stuff, and they're downstairs where we access them. But right now the barn is set up for preparation to fix the barn, to keep the flock, to keep the donkey, to keep the horses, to keep you know the sheep, the flock of sheep. So we're going to take these materials that God has provided us, we're going to prepare the barn, get it ready for when the day is we're blessed with those things. And that's that preparation I'm talking about that I could fill this up with hay, and then I wouldn't have room for the wood, and the wood would sit out and rot and not be usable for the thing that he, at the season he has us in right now. So we'll take these materials, we'll prepare our barn for the time that the flock does come, and we'll be better prepared. And finally, as he swore to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, again, that's the blessings we keep his commandments and walk in his ways, which is so difficult. It's almost, it's almost the hardest commandment for us is to walk in his ways because his ways are perfect. His ways are without sin. And I sin every moment that I walk because my mind is, I'm human. I have a wicked heart and it, it leads me from God. Um, but I've got my Bible, I've got my faith, and I've got... I've got the word that gets administered to me every Sunday when I go, go hear Brother Steve preached. And uh, I have a wonderful wife and family that uh, help keep me grounded. I've got this beautiful land, again, that God has given us. Like it says in this verse, this, this land that God has given us will be blessed to follow his ways and keep his commandments. So until, until next Sunday when we uh, go over another Lessons from the Ridge, I, I hope this has blessed someone. I know it blesses me to get out here and, and talk like this uh, in preparation for this. It just gets me closer and closer to God. So if anything, it's helping me in my walk, but I hope it helps you in your walk as well. And until then, I hope everyone has a blessed day and go Ridge Life.